Well, you know, I think I've droned on long enough. I just heard what happened. I wanted to offer my condolences to the team. Quark's loss is a true tragedy. The man was a hero. Brave, honest, kind, and humble to the core. <laughs> what a load of bullshit. Hello, this is Maxim347. For, well, um, another video where, bonus video of a game where I do personal tips. I don't want these in a while, but I feel like I should for this game particularly, because the post game can be pretty tough, as you saw in my videos. But, of course, the true final area in the game. Who is a Thornburg? Which we're not going there, obviously, today. This bonus video is basically about a few tips on how I grinded. All my characters are about level 70. 70 ish, 71 to 2 or 3, Revolveric, for a particular reason. But, um, yeah, I just finished with this little, my personal tips for the game. First of all, especially in the post game, you want to steal or buy from every NPC. Not some NPCs, not almost all of them, practically all of them. Even if the items didn't feel that good, just do it anyway. Give you peace of mind, because the worst thing you do on the backtrack later on, and you find a guy with a glass, but then you realize you have terrible items. But, but then you think to yourself, well, I should have got that earlier. Who cares? It's free, it's free items and stuff. <laughs> Five finger discount. <laughs> that's the whole point. That's the whole point of the scene mechanic in, in here. That's the whole point. Of course, there are some things which you cannot steal, you have to buy. And that's the cause of the um, battle um, hardening gear. Battle tester gear, yes. So basically, for starters, before we show you my idea of grinding, I'm going to show you guys basically um, how to get um, some battle tested gear. That they, they, they can get one of every battle tested gear easily by purchasing some NPCs like this. However, these guys only appear like uh, Xanta. He only appears after you complete a story, in this case, Hanit's story. So yeah, that has to gear, pretty much have to complete all the stories first, and some only appear during side quests. I'll do a link to a video which actually show where all the badges of gear is, where you can buy them. Then you can buy one of each though, but however, you can get more by grinding. <laughs> From certain other NPCs. The style is right here. Huh, there's a travel band here first. Oh, let's listen to it, shall we? So, say, Sir Erbwick, about that thing on your arm. My brand sword, you mean? Mm hmm, it looks like it would fetch a quite a price. Is that so? Are you going to appraise it? Can you tell how old it is? Who made it? Where it came from? Not quite. I got a, I got a hunch, that's all. Oh? Certainly, it is an ancient providence passed down through generations of knights sworn to protect the king. Surely, there's been countless battles and warded the blows of countless swords. I knew I could tell with just a glance. Selby, let me buy it off you. Yeah, I'll make it worth your while. It is a simple token of the compromise you served before me. I could not possibly sell it. Ah, you mustn't give in so easily, my little merchant girl. Little? Heh, <laughs> Primrose. Hey, Primrose, have you always had that necklace? Why is your gut telling you it's valuable treasure too? I don't know how about that, but it sure is unusual. What do you say, Primrose? Want to sell it? Sorry, it has a lot of sentimental value to me. No, you guys are no fun. <laughs> but yeah, there are quite a few banders in the game. And some I show off, some I don't. But you know, I just show as ones I can. There's quite a few combinations, especially in the post game. But as I, as I was saying, to get to grind battle um, tested gear, in this case, you beat her, there's a very small chance you might get the battle tested bow. You need to beat them in a challenge. The problem is that their drop rates are absurd. Like I heard it's like three percent. Like it's completely random. I've been grinding off her for a while and I haven't got one battle tested bow. But I know this is where you get it. I actually saw a video recommended video of how to easily grind these guys. But yes, <coughs> that's the other thing to talk about actually before we do that. Notice that my Obric is only one HP. Well I've been doing a bit of research and yeah, these um fights we have to do and do you know? Oh no 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 no! 
I, <laughs> I want a challenge, not provoke. Yeah, that's a maximum strength of 10. That means they're like the toughest um, opponents to fight one on one. And you could fight them legitimately, but the thing is, if you're trying to grind that gear, it's going to be really time consuming to do that. And again, it's really small chances. What you want to do, you should only really do this once you've had um, the advanced job classes. Which by now you really should have, especially during the post game. Post game, you should have those by now if it's a post game. Is he going to need them? <laughs> but yeah, my build basically for Ulbrick, for um, for grinding those um, battle test gear, is basically um, this setup right here. Notice that they have criticals on it, that's going to help me do your damage. That's why I got this gear, it's typically it's critical, and this for extra strength. The job. It's a apothecary. It's a certain skill which you can use, which does a lot of damage depending on the amount of health. So, the one, I'll show that one afterwards. Right here, that's down. Attack all foes with an axe, dealing damage invertly proportional to your current HP. In other words, less HP you have, the more damage you can do. However, there's a way to further boost this. Surpassing power, this means I can go past 9999, which is we need to help one shot, because these enemies. These NBCs have more than 9 bows, 99 HP. <laughs> Fortitude, this further boosts that the more damage the lower HP currently is, so this makes it even more stronger. Physical powers, this pretty much gives you all those physical and defense. Basically, you know when you get those buffs to give you a second defense, this is like a permanent buff though, so it's on all the time. So even if I was KO and I come back or something, I still have this buff. And BT Eater, boost the skill before by equipping character deal additional damage. So basically, the more I boost, the stronger the attack is going to be. So it does even more damage with that. But as you notice though, these two are from Warmaster, and that one is from the Stars here. So yeah, again, you can't really use this build very well until you have those advanced job classes. So, let's do this, shall we? Oh, I have no problem trying to beat her. She's easy. The problem is, will she actually drop it? So I'm probably sure she wouldn't, but it's good to show up anyway. But make sure you save before doing this, obviously. So, yep. About a fair and square to arms. You can trust me, so I accept this. I accept just this once. <laughs> yeah, just this once Let might hide. <laughs> so you see, I have very low HP. But this is good. Boost. Go to Papa Curry, then use Last Stand. And as you can see, I can watch like anything. <laughs> With each battle, I grow stronger. This makes it easier to grind. And of course, I don't get the battle tested, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's the problem though. It's really time consuming. But as you can see, once you fight them, they turn conscious. There's two ways you can go about this. You can go to Miscellaneous and you return the title. If you say beforehand of doing all this and just reset again, or you can just run out of the place entirely. Well, because um, that's the other way it resets. If you want to, um, if you want the unconscious person to wake up, exit the entire town, and come back here. And that person should be here again. See, so you can find him again. Of course, people like to just rather reset and say because technically you could. You can make um, Ulbrich really high level by doing this because some of the NBCs have uh, given quite a bit of experience, not to mention JP. So there's that as well. But most of you just this reset and stuff. But either way, it's still going to be time consuming. And again, the drop rates are super low. I might not even try to do this. I've tried it so far, no luck so far. I might try my other guys about shield. But, um. Again, I make a separate. Uh, um, I link to a separate video below that actually show all the locations of all the battle tested gear you can challenge. So I'm going to show that video as well. And obviously, give credit where credit is due because without those videos, I wouldn't know where the heck most of these guys were. But most of them actually got off screen without knowing because, again, I stole from every NBC I saw. In fact, the only one I didn't see was the battle tested sphere, which is back from Leon, who. Uh, it only seems to appear after a side quest, and the battles and the battle um, 
and that battle dagger, which is actually from, it's not from any town at all, it's actually a bit different, it's actually from the Undertale Cove. It goes to the very end, and you should see a familiar face there. Buy from her, and you should get the battle tested dagger. <laughs> Are you probably thinking any other preparations you do? So you just true find the boss? No. You are going to be using every single Prime member. Not four, or eight of them. That's how I was grinding everybody. So, the first that we, what I really suggest is um, make sure you have enough materials for um, Alfin so you can really um, start making some great stuff. I have quite a bit of money so I actually buy quite a few of these seeds. However, this stuff on the other hand you're going to have to find yourself. I mean, um, find from certain enemies. You actually need to either steal them, or if you're lucky enough, you got quite a few other stuff on getting from NPCs. But that's just a one time thing. Which I'm going to be doing off screen as well. There are certain enemies that seem to drop certain items and stuff, like if you go near the Ripple Tide area where there's a few enemies that might give you a sleep read, they might drop them, but it's much easier to steal them. I recommend if you are do I will do it I will um, do little details about this actually by showing you um, which enemies have which um at um, a description below, so make sure you read the description guys, there's a lot of information as well. But to make it a bit easier for you in trying to grind for these items, I recommend that you actually um, yeah, get a thief, but also equip um, Snatch, because you see double loot when using Steal or Collect, in this case Steal, so that'd be useful. However, you might find more than one enemy that want you want something to steal. So, you could use Pimrose's Dance, Strategic Seduction, which lets, uh, which lets a single ally usually target one foe affect all foes, all allies, not just foes, it's all allies. So, with that, I can steal from all enemies, which is sweet, <laughs> making my grinding much easier in trying to get materials. All those dust and seeds, um, All these seeds and dust, you can buy those from shops, all of them. It's just this stuff right here, the components. These you need to get from either enemies or from NPCs. Oh, except for Noxroot. Yeah, you can actually buy it in a store. Yeah, that you can get by in a store, but the rest you can't. <laughs> I've checked, so I know. <laughs> Other thing in preparation, though, obviously, is that since you're using Hanit, it has a unique ability to, um, Summon creatures, right? Well, let me show you some of the creatures I caught. Heaven Wing. You yeah, probably saw this before, but this is actually. Um, I mentioned that you can capture um, optional bosses. This is one of them. The Heaven Wing. You can actually capture this guy. And they're 10. They're very tough to catch. But their attack power is pretty sweet. But, even better, the Dread Wolf. Oh man. This is actually the best one to catch in the game, the Dread Wolf. It is fantastic. There's wild scratch all enemies, but there's multiple hits. It's actually brutal. And I just looked at the fact I catch two of them. I also caught this little guy, a Kate. Yes, look at the Kate. This might come in handy because of the stat buffs it might do, and also debuffs on enemies. You can actually catch up your Kate, by the way, but I'm not going to do that. It's way too time consuming and crazy. But most of these actually guys actually caught were actually from um, the place I was grinding. So Snowdrake, I caught um, Snowdrake, the Dreadwolf, and the Accursed Armor. I've actually all caught in the same place. So I'm actually going to show that off next. But um, yes, now I'm going to show off basically my main source for well, grinding as it were. And it's right... Here, more of the ice dragon. Now this is recommended level 45, but there's also recommended for there's also other recommended 45s. In fact, some at 50, 55, and 58. So what's special about that place? Well, for some reason, it seems to be a really place to grind in general. Plus, I don't know why, but those chubby caves seem to be a lot more often there. So what I'm going to do now off screen is I'm going to switch my party out to someone a bit more brutal to show you guys a great way of grinding. And I'll see you guys at uh, the Wall of the Ice Dragon. So I'll see you again once I've changed my members a bit. <laughs> Hello. 
Me and Master in 347. <laughs> well, what am I doing? <laughs> I mean, I'm back. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, from uh, basically my preparations, but um, this is basically, basically one of the grinding, more of the ice dragons. Now, again, there is. Now, remember that boss we fought ages ago? The uh, Dread Wolf. Well, now he can appear as a random encounter, but he's pretty rare. But if you do encounter him, do try to catch him though. You need to get one, because seriously. He is really brutal, a really powerful attacker and perfect, especially for the end game. However though, you will be there for quite a while, it's quite time you're trying to catch the bugger. So you know, you just gotta stick with it, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. But anywho, now for my setup for grinding. Basically, what you want is have one person with a captain's badge, which gives you extra experience for the whole party, and the band of friendship it gives you extra JP of the whole party. You get these two side quests. If you're watching my playthrough, you should already have these. I got them as soon as possible after signing the post saying because they were that good, and I left them on pretty much my party all the time afterwards because the extra experience I got. <laughs> they were just that good. However, though, you can actually get even more experience with support skills. If you have um, extra experience, gain additional experience from battles, and also hard worker. Which get bit of JP at the battles, you can get even more, and they do stack with the badges. So yeah, extra experience is from uh, Warmaster, and hard work is from Stars here. They play really well. Also got perseverance, so I, you won't be surprised from any of these fights whatsoever, because this is annoying. Especially you don't be surprised by that dread wolf, because you can still pack a punch. And uh, also heightened senses to give you a chance to first strike. Especially if you're trying to find those chewy cakes. <laughs> oh, and also goes on trees for extra coin. Just because, you know, I might as well. I mean, I'm grinding anyway for like experience. I might as well get some extra coin out of it. Especially useful in trying to stock up and cotch co and all that. But anywho, if I that, let's run out for. Oh, right, yeah. So that, uh, make sure you have some of the living ribbon. You can reach the chance of encountering enemies. Might as well. I'm not sure equipping more further increases the chances. I don't know if that's confirmed, but have at least one something to equip. Still run around for a bit. When you're running around, you notice the compass goes red. That gives you an increased chance of fighting enemies. What to do? Now, we were trying to aim for the perfect fight. We're not completely perfect, just basically um, trying to uh, at least break all enemies. We were trying to beat them on one turn. If you manage to beat all without taking any damage, that's like that you also get bonus for there, but that's not really as important. Breaking the guard of all enemies and defeating them all in one turn, as in before the next turn, right there in the counter. That's what's most important. The stars fall upon me. Sorcery. <laughs> Oof, that's icy breath. I am ready. I shouldn't use that actually. The one thing you can do to further make your chance to get more experience is if you're willing to dance. The problem is, it's completely random. You might get extra experience, JP, or you might get something completely different, or even worse. You'll see soon enough. Meh. Yeah. And. That! I haven't seen that before. The show is over. But as you saw, I didn't get the bonus experience, but only the bonus JP for domination. That's to be all the enemies before it turns over. But that was a pretty poor example. Let's go around again to try and do this fight. It also a bit looking whose turn it is as well. I'll make this quick. I'm ready. That's more like it. So as long as you as long, you don't need to break all the enemies guard, as long as you break at least one. Why almost the king or the others? You pretty much got you previously got the the J. You also got pretty much got the experience bonus, JV bonus. Beat them all before next turn, and if you care about getting extra coin, beat them without taking any damage. But honestly, that's not really important to me. Vengeance Salter. The show is over. See, I got the perfect experience. Like I said, untouched means enemies don't attack you, you never take any damage from Break, you can manage to break the use of one regard by killing everyone else, you get that bonus. And Domination, 
extra JP for doing it all within before the next turn. But they really like to come here as well because you might come across a chubby case and there's been times that I come across all three types of case. Literally all three types. It's like it's insanely good. <laughs> like really? All three types of case? Since this time I have a lot more leeway. For you. Let's see if we can get the dancers full potential. Again there guys, it's completely random, so I might I might even scream so we get myself killed. Let's see what happens. Oh yes! I can't believe I did that! Oh But yet that can happen. You can actually summon a monster. We actually summoned a Kate. There are three types of Kate. There's a culture Kate, there's um, the other Kate, and the Chubby Kate. I think the culture actually only gives you bonus money though, but still, it's good to see a Kate here. Man, um, fortunately though, I don't think I'm able to break the guard in time. No. Oh wait, no, no, yes I can. I can break the guard, um... Oh, I should really break the guard easily with, um, with my average storm. Yeah. But don't boost. Oh, they're actually here. Nice. Don't Oof. start things you can't finish. Huh. He gives, he gives you bonus um, experience in JP. Huh. Oh, no, I've noticed. I think it's bonus JP. Don't be the culture one. But yeah, very nice. But yeah, the hands of those guys there, I was like even hit him, wasn't actually trying to hit him that time. That's to be being super lucky. But if you do encounter those guys, don't hesitate. Don't like try to use physical attacks. What you wanna do Just use the stones. Just use the soul stones. Seriously. They're guaranteed hit and they always do no amount of damage. Even though they have really high magic resistances, they still hit. They don't have much health. Now you can one shot two types of caves with the large soul stones and use about three of them on the, a chubby cave. In fact, Primrose with a sorcerer can which one shot them with the spells because they always hit any three times. So it's really good. Trust me, it's so satisfying to kill all three types of caves. <laughs> the problem is though, that usually when I kill them, the chubby one gets away and that's the best one because that one gives you the most experience all three bonuses to experience JP and even coin, so it's all really nice. It doesn't matter, I have a lot of money so I can read easily read stuff in these day one. Just don't use any of these though. I'm not sure where else you can get these actually. I know you can steal them and stuff from um, NPCs, but I don't really normally to have these, unless there's something you can challenge. However, there is a way you can get a lot more revitalizing jam. You probably noticed that the rare enemies I was talking about. The ones I was talking about all the time, these uh, things like the Heaven Ring or the Dreadwolf. Well, if you do encounter them, you can actually steal revitalizing jam. You can always steal one from them. Remember, if you have that Pilfer skill, you can. Uh, not Pilfer skill, what's it called? the uh, snatch skill, you can get two of them instead. So it's a great way to uh, grind for those, because they're great, because they restore HP, SP and all BP. And if you combine that with a certain divine skill... Uh, let's see... If you combine that with Bifagun's Bounty... Oh, no, 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 wrong one. Um, Daughter's Charity, which lets him um, use a single item if it use an entire party, your entire party could literally be fully healing HP, SP, and BP for your entire party. It is that awesome. Or you could use um, Refreshing Jam, which restores HP and SP anyway, which is great. <laughs> now, let us hunt him. 
Letting the hunt begin. Now it's a bit more about capturing monsters because it is more to try and capture some to make them um, as powerful as possible. But yeah, the strength of it pretty much means um, how good they are. The more strength they have, the more strong they, they can be. Oh, uh, notice it's only at 0%. So it reaches to 100 to increase the percentage to 100 or more. What you need to do is lower the enemy's health, give it a status effect, and, or, or, and, break them. If you let you slow and you break them, pretty much guarantees you almost catch them. But even some, but th even that's not entirely guaranteed in all enemies. They really, like, there was a 58 area, those enemies there, um, well, those are really high leveled. Even though I'm at a higher level, it still doesn't seem to count. And those, um, rare monsters, those are very low percentage. At most, I got like 24% or something. And that was when I lowered his HP and broke his guard. And any terrorists don't have infinite health, you can actually kill them. <laughs> and then what you do, you screw. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot of things to think about here. There you go. Full of experience. That's not bad. Well, oh, I need experience signs too. Where's the nearest tavern? But the rarest one, the dance you can get, the best one, is actually a hundred times a hundred JP XP. Yes, that does exist. It's extremely rare. And dances aren't um, limited. You can keep, you can, if long as one enemy's alive, you can keep dances pretty much for as long as you like until you get the dice desired one. But be careful, the wild dancers could instantly kill you, the entire party. Like, you could get one dance that reduces your HP to one, their next dance causes a small explosion, your entire party's dead. So, yeah, don't get too crazy with it. You could take a super wister, and if you encounter a chubby case and use a dance and happen to boost your experience, you could do that. But because they're so, well, like to run away so much, it's not really the best idea. Also, doing this really halts down the grinding process. I'm just showing you guys some options what you can do. Also, the Wolverines in particular are pretty weak around here, but they give them a pretty nice wave of experience. But, I want to try and find a ticket around here. Oh, found you! <laughs> Beautiful! That's what I wanted. The Direwolf. Okay, first of all, let's uh, blast this guy to bits. Wait. Hmm. Ah! It's just, it's just I'm just right. reducing his health first, actually. Be careful, remember, even though he's now a slower enemy, he's still just as powerful, and just like before, he can summon a. Uh, You can still summon uh, more enemies, just like before. <laughs> so doing this is a good idea. Let my arrow fly in true. I am ready. Vengeance Salter! Out of my way. Uh, this is where the access comes in. Use this to check how much health he's got left. Hmm. Cause you don't accidentally kill him. <laughs> what next? My turn now. Ah! 
Letting my arrow fly in true. Yep, he is a caption limit child percent, that's because he's dazed. At maximum, that's 24%. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best of much I can do. And oh, pretty much this is what you have to do now. And you, you can't do it again. Like, um, break him again, because you actually kill him. So, yeah, that's what's so annoying about it. It's like, just a giant game of boosting her, um, and it's, a uh, burst until she can use full burst, and then, well, BP, t oh, boost up a BP to go to full burst, and then capture it. So, yeah. That's pretty much, it is, it's really tiny to me, guys. So you're gonna be there for a long time. I just want to show you guys what it was like. The show is over. And yes, I know. I could have stolen the revised sizing jam there. <laughs> I'm just showing you guys an example. But actually, there is a chubby cake here as well. The farmer is though is extremely aware and wins away. I'm probably not going to show him because you know he's extremely rare to find. I am ready. I'm ready. Nope, that happens too. Really? Yeah. Of course. It's nope. I didn't actually think I was straight away. Out of my way. And that's that. But yeah, you can get some other things here, so like essences or pomegranate here. It depends on the area, in particular. But okay, so what I'm going to do now is probably going to be insane and really time consuming. What I'm going to do now, guys, I'm actually going to try and find a chubby gate around here. Try to. And why it doesn't run the one away. So I'll see you guys then. This could take a while. Finally! Then be hunting. Got ya! Coming! This! This is what I want. Right here. However though. That's the culture cake. That is normal cake. And that is the chubby cake. That's the bug that always runs away super quick. There's a way to get rid of these two guys super quickly. By using uh, a soul stone. But shouldn't we save those up or something? It's the post game, man. What are you saving it up for? Maybe for the true final boss, but you're not going to use them nearly as much. Seriously, if you at my point now, you've pretty much done everything besides true final boss. There's no point saving these up. Use them to get rid of these guys quicker, because they run away super fast. So get rid of them right now. Try and this. And let's see. Is he going to run away? No, he isn't. <laughs> Oh, perfect! And even better... <laughs> even better, there's still one enemy left! If I break him and get rid of that guy as well... I can get the full bonus! I am ready. However though, if you also have a sorcerer, you don't actually need any more of those um, stones. Only use them for if you don't have a sorcerer. Otherwise, just blast the bits with this! Ignis Artair! Now I could have done the dance the show is to get even more, but that was too risky. Now after all the time trying to find it. See? I've gone up quite a few levels trying to find the bugger, but there we go. That's the full bonus. And I didn't even use the dance. We have the other things equipped. It's pretty awesome with that experience in JP. But yeah. As you notice, I counted all three types of cakes there. Not one, not two, all three types. And yes, you can capture them if you're crazy enough to try and do that. <laughs> Well, no, I've managed to kill one of them, but that was my dumb luck. I actually managed to catch one of them. Ugh. Thank goodness that crap's done. Okay, let's go back to Northreach now. But yeah, 
that's why I'll, that's good to go in that cave. I don't know any other places that also have those three types of caves. If they do, besides like this North Reach or the Frostlands region near the level 45 areas, please comment below. But I don't know any of it. But if you do want to find a choice besides that place, you need to find areas which are recommend level 45 or over. That's where you find the chubby caves. Any other areas lower than that, and you might find some other types of caves, but not the chubby ones. But uh, yeah. Oh, you can't steal from them either. But there is a slight chance that I think they do job with ice sizing jam. Because I got one once, randomly, while I was when I beat all three of them. So, you know. But it's not like you just might find a chubby K on its own with a bunch of other enemies. But it's still good to get, because it still gives you a ton of experience. But yeah, beating up all three though, that's the cue de grace. It's just awesome. <laughs> but there we go. But that's pretty much my ideal grinding spot. As you saw, we've got quite a few levels off screen and just trying to find it. But obviously, that's the you thing I do want to talk about, though, is um, also uh, with the guidance. Let's see, part ways. You want to find people that give really good skills and strengths. It's easy for um, Ophelia because as long as she's at a certain level, she can guide anybody. But Primrose is a bit different, it's percentage, which is a bit more annoying, trying to find really good um, NPCs to follow you. But uh, for the higher the strength, the better they are, basically. And the ones you really want to find are the ones that give you good buffs on your party, or debuffs. Like there's one guy, like... Um... Actually, I can show you one actually, yeah, that one I don't have to... Um off screen. Let's see. Where there we go. Marceline. I'm actually gonna show one of them because I remember it because he's pretty useful. It was actually from a side quest. Actually this NPC only appeared after a side quest, but he's really good. It's pretty much um <coughs> Maya's father. I mean um <coughs> Ali's father. But if you recruit him gives you full infuelment. What this does is that it gives you debuffs, all debuffs on all enemies. As you saw the percentage chance is pretty low for um, Primrose. But if I did it with Ophelia, it's guaranteed. Because the thing about the passive skills is a bit of a difference. Even though some passive skills do work pretty much the same, there are some differences. For instance, with um, with Scrutinizer and Choir, that they both give they, they both gather info. Here's a difference. With the scrutinize, you can scrutinize anybody, but it's at a percentage. With inquire, you can only scrutinize someone if you're at a certain level. Like sometimes it might be grey down, you examine it, and it says something like you need to be at least level 30 to use this. The same goes for Primrose and Ophelia. If um Primrose he saw his percentage chance, well Ophelia's guaranteed only at a certain percentage level. And the same goes for challenge and provoke. Challenge, you have to be at a certain level, but with Provoke, you can do it with anybody. The thing is, though, with Provoke, you have to use the animals you capture it, and I don't like doing that because these animals, especially the animals that I caught, are really good ones, and tough ones to get as well, so I'd rather not waste them on an NPC. <laughs> especially if you're trying to go in for that battle tested gear, if you really want to do that. But the one that's really unique is obviously is purchase and steal. Steal means you can pretty much get stuff absolutely free, but it's a percentage whether you steal it or not. Purchase, guaranteed, but obviously you need to buy it. But there's a chance though you can get a discount though when you buy it, so you might get you might get a bit of money back, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much all I want to really talk about, really. Well, there is certain jobs as well. But yeah, how I did my jobs for most of the game is I've pretty much done all of the jobs except for um, the divine skill for the most part. I learned all these other jobs, then got all the other support skills at the bottom. Except for the divine skill, then move on to the next job. I did it with all my Pi members. The hardest ones are going to be the advanced job classes because those cost 2000 JP each. The last one is 5000. The other ones, they say. They're, they're mostly cheap, like the cleric and the others, and then the last one is like um, 3,000, but that's just one. 
whereas Sorceress, Warmaster, Runoid and Star Seer is all 2,000 each, followed by 5,000. But that's how I missed the information of jobs. I just did it until um, I learned all of the passive skills, aka support skills, for all of the jobs. Then I started learning focusing on divine skills. With the exception with the default job, as in the primary job. Like for instance, Hannah's primary job is hunter. So obviously I was going to learn a divine skill since she's always going to be a hunter. That's and I think it's okay to use learning divine skills for your primary jobs because you're always going to have those jobs that you can't get rid of them they're part of the character, it's part of who they are so you might as well learn divine skills associated with it, this makes more sense but as the sub jobs learn all your skills except divine skill then switch to the next one and all that but I actually learned all of the support skills of all my characters including the ones from the advanced jobs so now I'm pretty much just learning divine skills and stuff in and out while leveling up it definitely be useful against the fine, true final boss, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we need to talk about, really. Hope you guys enjoyed this, um, my personal tips on the game. If you have any comments below, any other tips of your own, please comment. I also give it links as well to some of those um, places I talked about, like finding all the rest of the battle tested weapons, where you can buy them from or which NBCs you can uh, farm the other ones from and also I have a description on uh, where to find the rest of those um, ingredients for the um, concoction specifically uh, the components not the not the um, not these the components specifically also the ones which I always seem to have less on is Essence of Plume and Sleep Read well, the heroes I seem a decent amount. Probably because of, I very rarely went out for many battles throughout the game. Also, I was very smart in how I leveled up my characters. I always switched out characters, so at the end, before with all the grinding I did now, everyone was about level 55 or something, like mid 50s. We kept through my default team, and that was because I was doing all the post game stuff. <laughs> but next time, guys, there'll be well, the true finale of this game. And it might be a two-parter because of how long it is. Most likely it's going to be a two-parter. <laughs> Lost Green is going to level grind uh, everyone else to about level 75 or, or so of the rest of the characters. And also a few more divine skills. I think by then I'll probably have more than enough um, JP than every other divine skills. Pretty much every single party member give me even more versatility. The vine skill is just an afterthought now for the sub jobs. But that's why those that's why that area that more of the dry ice dragon is really important. Oh right, yes. I keep forgetting to I keep forgetting to talk about things here if I am this off. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, I guess the other thing's alright is my skills. I talked about ones with boosting like Tomato JP, but what are these others? Well for Hannah, because she makes a physical attacker. I had a BT Eater, which means, and BT Start and Boost Starter. Boost Starter means I have an extra BP at the start. BP Eater means the more BP I consume, the more damage I do. This gives me a permanent attack and defense buff. The same for um, Augmented Element. I mean, no, not that one. I mean um, Elemental Edge. I don't really talk much about these, but that's just pretty much the same, augmented elements. Oh wait, no no no, um, Elemental Edge gives you a permanent stat buff against element um, attack and defense. With augmented elements means if you use elemental attack, it does more damage. So it's pretty sweet. Stronger strikes, that's pretty useful. Basically, increased damage dealt when striking a foe's weak point. So that's pretty cool, breaking their guards, you can give you more damage. This is even the best combination as well. I do it with most just to help um, make it easier to level grind and stuff. But there's probably tons of better combinations out there. And if there are, I'm going to show that off actually um, when I do the true finale. Because yeah, I'm going to do it with live commentary guys. Because I feel like I should probably talk about it more because of how tough the true finale is. Not to mention how long. <laughs> but 
Yes, I haven't forgotten anything now. <laughs> I'm just thinking. But um, there we go. That's pretty much my personal tips on uh, Octopath Travelers. Again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry about all the times I've got to talk about something, but you know, it's hard trying to cover all your bases. <laughs> but now, finally, next time we'll be doing the true finale. Off screen, and do the lip build ever grinding with the other four pie members. That shouldn't take nearly as long though as compared to the other days. Especially since the fact that I've been uh, pretty good with leveling them out all equally throughout the game because you are using all the characters. So, uh, yeah, see you guys then when we go to the Moving to Thornburg. With that, is Maximum 347. Get into the object of the platformer. Stay classy and watch out for that finale of the post game. <laughs>